All right, we have head coach Mike Candrea, and uh, first question will go to Troy Hutchinson. So, Coach, uh, just going back to last week, how frustrating is it to see games uh, canceled due to weather when knowing this is a COVID year and anything can happen? Yeah, you know, I think going into the season, the key word was going to be flexibility, and uh, right out of the shoot, we had to deal with it. Um, not COVID, but uh, crazy weather in uh, Austin, Texas, you know, and usually the weather's pretty good there. So it was um, it was frustrating, you know, but uh, we did what we could and and um, just glad to get back home. Our, we, we could still be there, you know, the way it looks like right now with the weather. So I was very thankful that we got everyone back and we were able to practice on uh, Saturday and Sunday in scrimmage, which I thought was um, important for us. And then you guys added a game with uh, Southern Utah to start off this uh, Hill and Brand Invitational. Are you guys going to try to do that moving forward with a couple of series, maybe try to plug in an extra game to make up those lost games? Yeah, we're going to try to pick up the uh, four games that we missed. Um, uh, I think we've, um, we're, we've got some talks going on right now with uh, our next tournament to maybe add a team. And, um, uh, you know, who – who knows? I mean, throughout this year, it's going to be like that. So I think everyone's kind of used to it. All right. Next up, we've got Alec White. Yeah, Coach, I was talking to, to Jesse about just staying in the hotel, and she said when you guys got – some of the girls were able to go home, and then some of the girls uh, with her and Alyssa and you guys were still in the hotel with the delayed flights. You went out for, for ice cream, and she said, you only you only have Dairy Queen. What What's the – what was that experience and what's your Dairy Queen order? Well, it just shows my age, you know, growing up, that was the only ice cream that was around was Dairy Queen. And I'm just a diehard Butterfinger Blizzard man. And if I have my choice, that's where I'm going to go. So and then, it was convenient. Yeah. And then just uh, kind of walk me through that, that series of events where you're able to, to get some girls on flights home and then the, you know, the, the, the delayed flights, just how did, how did that whole process play out? Well, yeah, I mean, when we, uh, originally, uh, the canceled the, the tournament, we, um, we had a flight out, um, I think it was Thursday night and that got canceled. And so then we were kind of, um, brainstorming what we could do. And, you know, Brittany Mead, um, who does a lot of our travel was here in Tucson um, with basketball and, and Stacy was on the road with us and they worked really hard to try to get everyone out. And next thing I know, there was three flights going out on Friday and, um, I was on the last flight, the 640 flight. And I kind of was looking around going, this is the last flight. And if we, the, the connection in Dallas is going to be very, very tough. And sure enough, um, I decided that we had 20 minutes to get off the plane and get to another gate that wasn't going to happen and and it, later on it showed that that flight didn't even leave till nine o'clock we would have missed our our connecting flight so it was kind of a blessing that we stayed the night there and and um went out and hit some more with the group that i had and then got back uh, about 10 o'clock on uh, saturday and um, blessed them with a practice at uh, one o'clock a little scrimmage and they're resilient, you know, and I think in, in what we're going to be dealing with, um, you just you have to deal with it, you know, and um, it was just kind of funny that it was the weather and, and not COVID that we were dealing with. Go ahead, Ryan. Um, what kind of advice do you, are you giving Jesse this year? And, you know, she's in the she's chasing the home run record, and that's going to be something that is going to be brought up all season. Well, you can't. I mean, shy away from it. It's going to happen and people are going to talk about it. And I think as a player, you just have to really go back to the basics and go out and play the game. You know, um, records are going to happen if, if you go out and perform. So yeah, I think you really got to go back to the basics to make sure that you're ready to play, you know, physically, mentally, emotionally. And, um, you know, we all say play the game one pitch at a time, but it's so true. If you, you look too far down the road, uh, this game will, bite you. And I think Jessie's um, got a good head on her shoulder. She um, loves to play the game. I think, you know, maybe with COVID and, and having this break for such a long time, she's really going back to the basics of just appreciating being on the field and playing the game. And so, well, well, you know, I, I don't think it's going to be a concern. Um, 
you know, I watched uh, Roger Maris go through it, and I hope that doesn't happen. But um, I think she's got a good head on her shoulders, and, and she's, a, she's a good player. So really, the foundation is going to be just go out and play. You know, let the game come to you, and, and um, don't put any added pressure on yourself. There's enough pressure in the game. And so she's going to have to go back to just relaxing and and uh, doing what she does. You know, it's, it's a team sport. And I think a lot of times when you can kind of take that individual um, focus and put it on the team, it sometimes relieves a lot of that pressure. And she's a really good team player, and I think um, I think she'll be fine with it. And when you recruited her, did you foresee her being in this position where she would have a chance to break the record? And what would it mean to you if she does do that? Well, I don't think when you recruit um, that you ever know that a kid's going to be in a position like this. Um, you hope they are. And I really felt like she had potential to be, you know, a 20 plus home run hitter every year. Um, but you, you never know. It's kind of like recruiting classes. You know, I never say that it's going to be a great recruiting class until they're juniors, until you kind of see what they do. And the body of work's been there. Jesse has um, done a tremendous job. And and she's a she's a really good bad ball hitter, so she's hard to pitch to because she doesn't know a pitch that she doesn't like. If she can see it, she can hit it. So that kind of helps, you know. Um, sometimes I get frustrated that she doesn't take more pitches because she could probably draw more walks. But at the end of the day, she's a very aggressive hitter. She's got great hand-eye coordination, and um, you know, I I'm just really really happy that she's an Arizona Wildcat more than anything. And she's helped us win a lot of ball games. Um, and so if the record's had, so be it. But if not, she's, I think she still has left a tremendous legacy here in our program. And I'm probably more happy for that. All right, we'll go to Rich next. Thank you very much, Mike. How are you? I'm good, Rich. How are you? Good. What did you, what do you miss the most? What have you missed the most with this COVID disruption, being away from the field, not having uh, games going on? Well, I think just the competition. I mean, you, you spend a lot of time practicing and in our sport, we practice a lot more than we play. So there comes a point in time when you have to take that test, you know, and find out where you're at and what you need to work on. And so I've kind of really missed that. I mean, I, I love the process. I've, I've, always um, been a practice coach. I, I spent a lot of time on making sure that practices are, are efficient, um, that we're getting things out of it, and that we're preparing for a game. And usually we play the game to kind of find out where we're at and what we need to work on. And so we missed that. You know, we don't really know. And I think um, all of us are anxious to kind of see, you know, get back into the flow of things because there there is a, a mindset and there's a motor that that each kid has that's completely different than practice. And until you really get into the game mode and start feeling that, um, that that's a whole other element that you have to deal with. And I think our freshmen um, have done a really good job in practice, but, you know, what are they going to be like come game time with uh, another opponent in the dugout and their uniform on? And so I'm, I'm really anxious to kind of see where we're at. And, um, you know, I like this team. I think we're – we're very prepared for our first test. And then from there, then on, it's going to be each week, you know, what do we need to do to get better? And um, you don't know until you play games. Initially, who do you think is going to be ahead hitters or pitchers with this long layoff? Um, I, I would always say probably hitters. Um, you know, our game has become, um, I think a hitters game. It's uh you know, a combination of uh, these kids are stronger and quicker and faster, more prepared, um, equipment so much better. I mean, I go back to when I first came here, we were using aluminum bats. And if you know anything about aluminum bats, they are, what you see is what you get, you know. <laughs> they're not they're not really friendly for hitters where um, softball is a lot like golf. You know, you go out and you want to buy another 10 yards or 20 yards and and our equipment's really good, and our hitters are really good. So, for me, pitching is the toughest thing in our game. And maybe that's why they put a circle around that position, but it's becoming more difficult um, to find pitchers that can give you, you know, even 10, 11, 12 strikeouts a game um, because the hitters are that good. So, 
they basically pitch the contact, so you have to put a premium on defense, and um, you're going to give up runs. And that was the hardest thing for me to get used to because I was so used to throwing zeros up there. And, you know, we give up one or two runs in an inning. I would get all bent out of shape that this pitcher's losing it. Where now, you know, they may give up three and they may shut them out the rest of the way. So um, it, it really has taught us to, to have patience, but we have to rely on every aspect of our game. And um, I think that's the one thing that this team is understands is that you have to pitch. You know, you have to play great defense. You got to get timely hitting, and the game hasn't changed in that regard. Thank you so much. Good luck this week. Thank and you. We've got time for one more here, and we'll go to Ryan. Uh, Denim's ERA has been around one nine all three of her, of her years here. What do you think she has to do to to improve that? And and how important would that be for the team? Because you look around and you, you see all these really great pitching duos, especially like at UCLA. Well, I think the big thing at, at, at our level right now is keeping the ball in the ballpark. You know, and staying away from crooked numbers. In order to do that, um, you know, as a pitcher, you have to you have to be able to keep people off balance. I really believe, and so I think an off-speed pitch uh, is going to be crucial for her, being able to have command of her off-speed. Uh, and um, so, you know, you either you either pitch the location, you have great movement, or you have great deception. And I think more pitchers at this level deception becomes a big issue. And so you watch the ones that are very effective over a long period of time. Number one, they kind of redevelop themselves every year, um, maybe add a, a pitch to their repertoire. But the big thing is they all have really good off-speed pitches. And so I think that's going to be the key for us. And I think it's the key for our whole pitching staff is um, you're not going to blow the ball by these kids. And I don't care if you throw 70 miles an hour, they're going to catch up to that. But if you can keep people off balance, you got a chance uh, to be successful at this level. All right. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Good seeing everyone. All right. I think we are good to go. We've got seniors Jesse Harper and Alyssa Denham here. And we'll use the raise hand function. And please, when you ask the question, um, address the player that you would like to answer the question. Ryan, we'll start with you. Um, so Jesse, I mean, what was that last week like when you guys probably were so excited to go to Texas and then you get there and just to find out that the games were canceled? It was a little bit of an emotional roller coaster, not gonna lie. We were so full of high emotions, high hopes for that game. We're so excited, a, a two top 10 matchup. Like that's all you can ask for for the first week. And we get there and it's pretty chilly. My goodness, it was cold. Definitely not Tucson weather. Um, so we were stuck kind of into our home hotel rooms, doing all the COVID precautions. But my goodness, it was very defeating when all you were told was, hey, you're not playing at all. You're stuck to this hotel room. We're going to try and get you to go back to Tucson when we can. And then, of course, our flight was canceled. And it just was like, oh, we're in this hotel even longer. I just want to play. I want to get out in the field. Um, but hey, now we get on the plus side, we get to open up here at Rita Hillenbrand and pretty much that's where we always want to start is here on our home turf. So I'm excited for this weekend and I think it's going to be a good one for sure. Yeah. And what, how would you describe the mood of the team? I'm sure, you know, you're, you're already excited to get going and now you're probably even double excited. After oh, I know yeah. we're, longer. we're triple excited. I'll say that triple excited, quadruple excited. We're just ready to go. I mean, it's been a long time coming and we have a really solid bunch of girls here. Um, one through 22, we're all pretty solid. So I'm excited to see what coach decides as the starting lineup, but I have faith in everyone on my team and I know it's going to be a good weekend. And, and Jesse, when we talked to you in April after the season had been canceled, that you said the number one thing that you were, um, that was most disappointing was that you weren't, get a, weren't going to get a chance to play in front of your family again, or at least that was what you were afraid of. But now that you've had time to reflect on it, I mean, the thing that everyone's going to talk about this season is the home run chase. Um, how, how are you approaching that? And and what do you just kind of think about being in the position that you're in so close to, to breaking a record like that? Yeah, well, definitely going talking about the family aspect. I want more than anything to have our team to be able to have our fans, our family in the stands. Um, I love playing in front of my parents and just being able to look up and see my parents and my grandparents in the stands and supporting me and my teammates. But uh, right now, as far as the home run record goes, I'm just here to play, have some fun with my teammates and win some games. I want to make it to the World Series. I want to be playing the last game of the season. 
So as long as I can have that national championship ring on my finger at the end of this, I don't care about any record. I just want to win. And that's just, that's the name of the game. The home run record is cool, but I definitely think this is going to be the year of the home runs for everyone. Um, we've seen a lot of home runs hit already by other teams so far, but who can, the home runs are great just to make the game exciting, but I want to win that last game. And I think this team can do it. <laughs> And, and what do you just think about your career now that you're in, entering your fifth season and how it's kind of unfolded compared to how you expected? Yeah, I'm just thankful, taking it day by day. Um, you never know when your last game is going to be, and we learned that last season. Um, but I'm just so thankful to be here with my teammates and finish it out with my senior group. We are a special group, and I think there's, we're going to have a bright future ahead of us. Okay, we'll go to Troy Hutchinson next. Uh, this is for both of you guys. Uh, even though the Invitational or the Classic was canceled, it was still an opportunity to uh, learn more about the freshmen in a road environment. Uh, how did they handle that in terms of traveling? Uh, was it kind of wide-eyed? What, what was that like to watch? You want to take it over? Um, so I think that they were super excited. There was a lot of nerves. I do know that. Um, and we were just kind of jokingly saying that it was our test run. So there was no pressure of the games necessarily. So now they know what to do when we travel. And it went pretty smoothly. And besides the flights getting delayed and everything like that, it was a good learning experience for everyone. And then Alyssa, you know, you have two freshmen there in the, bull in the bullpen with you guys. Uh, obviously you and Mariah are the two seniors. What have you seen uh, for the freshmen's pro uh, progress so far? I know you guys haven't played, but what have you seen in practice out of them? Well, I've gotten an opportunity to get pretty close with both of them, and um, the growth is tremendous. Um, their work ethics are, it, that's the start of it. And the progress that they've made is unbelievable, and it's really cool to like be a senior and being able to like teach them the, the growing pains that they're going to go through and that it, everybody goes through it, and they're not the only ones having to face it and this and that, but they, I think that what's really cool is they, they want feedback, they want to learn, they want to grow, and they want to like, they want to be in this place, and um, I think that they're going to both, and our whole bullpen in general, are going to have a big role on this team. Alec White, go ahead. Yeah, for, for Jesse, can you just take me through the, the delays on the, the flights and the kind of the timing of it when you guys were supposed to fly out and then it gets delayed and just take me through kind of how you guys were able to, to get back home. Yeah, well, one of my favorite parts about college softball is being able to travel. I love going and looking at all the different schools, their stadiums, what all they have to offer. I obviously think that we here at Tucson have the best of the best. Um, but that's one of my favorite parts. So I love traveling and this trip made me hate traveling. My goodness. Um, but we basically were told that our games were canceled. So we had to deal with those emotions. And then we were sitting in our hotel room the whole time because for COVID, you're only supposed to be in your room with your roommate. And if you had to go get food, you had to come bring it back up to your room and eat it in your room. So we kind of lost that social aspect, which was a kind of a little bit sad. I was going a little stir crazy in my room. Um, but after the, I think it was, shoot, I even lost track of days while I was there. Um, but anyways, coach came into up to us and said, Hey, our games are canceled. Get your mind right. We're going to be opening up in Rita Hill and brand next week. We're going to try and reschedule more games to fill those slots. Um, but right now we're looking for a flight. He used the term stay fluid. And I've never really heard that term, but he was laughing when he said, he said, stay fluid. Everyone got to be on your toes. We're going to try and get you a flight. So we got one flight and then all of a sudden we heard that one was canceled. And then the next day we heard that there was three separate flights, one leaving at 1230, one leaving at 430 and one leaving at 630. And me being me, I was like, OK, 1230 for me, please. <laughs> Let's go home. <laughs> um, but only five people made it on that flight and uh, half the rest of the team made it on the 430 flight. And me and Denim were actually on the 630 flight with a good chunk of our girls. And those two earlier flights got out safely. I was happy they were able to make it home. But unfortunately, that 6.30 flight, we heard that we had an hour delay. And then the hour delay turned into, you're spending the night here again. So coach took us group and we went and hit. Um, it was nicer to hit with a little bit of a small group. And then he took us out for some victory ice cream to celebrate us staying in the hotel for one more night. Um, that was coach's request is that if we were going to eat ice cream, it had to be Dairy Queen so he can get his Butterfinger uh, blizzard. He was so excited for that. That was probably the highlight of his trip.
Wow, that, that's great. And then just the, the emotions now of trying to put that behind you and open up, uh, you know, this weekend. Uh, how do you, how do you kind of put that in the rear view and, and get back in, at practice and obviously play in what's pretty good weather right now? Yeah, it's beautiful outside. I mean, nothing better than some 75 and sunny. Um, but obviously, like I said earlier, we have to take it day by day. Uh, we know who we're going to be playing now. We can scratch Texas and Oklahoma, uh, Alabama off the list. We're going to play Southern Utah. And uh, we just have to be ready for those games in New Mexico. Um, but I'm so excited to be opening up at home. Um, this is definitely where we want to be. And we're going to show them what Arizona softball is all about. We'll go to Ryan Kelp here again. Um, Alyssa, your ERA has been about around like one nine. Your your first three seasons here. Um, what do you kind of what do you think is like the next step for you as a pitcher? I know when we were last talking to you, you mentioned um, like cutting back on walks. That was kind of an issue for you in twenty twenty. Yeah, so I don't really um, keep up with like my stats or anything like that, just because it kind of becomes like a mind game. <laughs> um, but. I think just going out every game with intent and a purpose and just going right at batters, I think that that's where I'm going to find a lot of success. Um, well, I've developed a lot of different things this season, um, like over quarantine and this fall. So I'm super excited to like do those in a game rather than like against our own hitters that we face probably about 500 times now. <laughs> And how did your preparation, how is it different this year than in years past because of the, the COVID protocols and things like that? Um, it was kind of tough over quarantine because it's um, discipline. I mean, it's the discipline to get up and go work out every single day to go pitch, go take ground balls because that's important, you know. And then we get back here and everything starts in small groups and then we get to work our way into team practices. And I think that I've never been so excited to – have team practices and scrimmages and now the scrimmages are kind of getting old and now I think it's perfect timing in order to start games so it's kind of been um, a long road to get here but I definitely am super excited to see what this season has. Do you feel as prepared as normal or maybe more prepared just because you've had to maybe look at things a little bit differently? Yeah, I feel I feel more prepared. I feel like you're older. I, I know what to expect in every a situation I feel like um, I think that that's what's really cool is that I've been like playing college softball for five years now and I'm getting to help the freshmen and um, I totally take like pride in that and helping them and like helping them develop so it's kind of cool being in that leadership position also in the bullpen and what do you think is the strength of this pitching staff Everybody throws different pitches. I don't think there's a person on our bullpen that like they throw the same pitches or anything like that. I think we bring a lot of different looks to the table. Um, a lot of experience too. I mean, even the freshmen, they have experience in big games. It's not college games, but um, I think they're totally ready for that. So where do you think you fit in in terms of what you bring to the table? Um, well, everybody knows I bring a drop ball and um, that's what I, I'm known for. And so I take a lot of pride in that and keeping the ball low. So as long as I keep the ball low, then I will keep the ball in the ballpark and I'll be successful. <laughs> All right, we'll go to <clears throat> excuse me. We'll go to Rich Herrera next. Uh, Mike, Danny, can I get permission to record, please? Yes, I will do that. I'll do that, Mike. Okay, great. Thank you so much, yep. um, Alyssa. Good afternoon. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Let's talk about the a range of emotions that you've had over the last 365 days from the season getting canceled to finally getting back to campus, finally getting to practice, going on a big road trip, having it all taken away from you, and now having to get excited for this next game. Man, I heard Coach tell us that we were opening in Texas, and the first thing I do is I call my entire family, which is about 30 to 40 people, and I'm telling them that they need to make arrangements to be at UT because that's like three hours away from home. We haven't played in Texas since my sophomore year here. So I was really upset last weekend when um, it got canceled. But the good thing is, is my parents, they were already in Austin. So I got to like kind of wave to them in the lobby, have a little conversation, obviously with masks and six feet apart. So that was a lot different and kind of mentally emotional just because <laughs> Um, not being able to necessarily give my parents a big hug like I wanted to, but um, it's all part of the process. And with COVID, those are the sacrifices I feel like we're all having to make as a team. 
And um, I think that it leads up to being super excited for this weekend. I mean, even though there's no fans, I think all of us are going to have a lot of nerves, a lot of adrenaline to get through this weekend. And I think it's going to be super exciting. How much sleep do you think you're going to get the night before? Probably none. <laughs> I'm already getting super excited, a little nervous, you know, face somebody besides my own teammates. But the kind of way I think about it is if I can get our hitters out, then I should be able to get every other hitter in the, in the country out. So um, I'm really excited. Thank you so much. Uh, Jesse, a couple questions for you, if you don't mind. Let's hear it. All right. So let's talk a little bit about uh, this tournament coming up this week. Uh, give us a little scouting report. How excited are you to face somebody not wearing Arizona red, white, and blue? I am so tired of facing our pitchers. My goodness. Uh, the scrimmages have been amazing. It's one of my favorite parts about this COVID time is that we have so many players on our team now that we can have, and they're all pretty much to fill a team. So we've been doing a lot of scrimmages and it's been great to see live pitching, but my goodness, do I know Mariah like by the back of my hand now? I am tired of seeing her. I'm tired of seeing all of our pitchers. I'm tired of having to play shortstop with Alyssa Palomino up to bat. So I'm ready to see new people. Um, but my biggest thing is I just want to put on a uniform again, wear that Arizona across my chest and play with my teammates. I think, um, when you're playing in these scrimmages, we keep that high intensity, but to have all your teammates in the dugout and to be cheering for each other, not cheering against you, because Alyssa Palomino on the other side, I'm cheering against her when we're, we're scrimmaging. But now we get to cheer for each other, um, and I am so excited for opening day. Um, my sister was already messaging me saying, are these games going to be live streamed? I want to watch. So it's kind of cool that she is taking her time because she's plays with ASU and they're having their off weekend. She wants to watch us. I know everyone around the country is excited to watch some Arizona softball, um, but I'm just so excited. Our team is something special this year. We have a good bunch. Um, so I think it's going to be a good weekend. I think it's going to be some quality games you'll see out of us for sure. Jesse, I'm assuming this is the longest you've ever gone without playing in an actual game. How long have you been playing softball and have you ever had a break like this? And, and having that break, does it help you appreciate what you have as an opportunity as a senior even more now? Yes, my goodness. I've learned to love the game so much more and be thankful for all that I have here at Arizona. Uh, going home during COVID, the gyms were shut down in my hometown. The parks were locked. Um, the usual park that my sister and I would go to all the time with my dad and he'd hit ground balls to us. I got kicked out. I was like, my goodness, this was my high school field. I put a lot of work in here. Let me in. Um, but with COVID, obviously, they shut it down. Um, so my sister and I were finding creative ways to stay active at home with each other. Um, but definitely, I grew major appreciation for all that I have. And being able to come back here right when COVID, when we were able to come back in August and use our weight room, use our field, have coach hit me ground balls. My goodness, coach hits the best phone go ever. Um, so I rubbed that into my dad right away. I'm like, oh, dad, I'm so tired of your ground balls. Coach is so much better than you. Um, but to be here with our team and putting in the work together, um, I've grown to appreciate my teammates, seeing them every day. That was the longest that I've gone without seeing my teammates, um, which is a crazy thing because we're here grinding it out every single day together. And to go home for months on end and not know when I was going to see Denim or anyone again was kind of weird. So I'm definitely thankful for all this sport has given to me. And I'm so excited to step out in the field with my friends and just have fun and play the game we love. You mentioned cheering. Sorry, Who's the sorry, best Richard. cheer? Oh, I'm sorry, sorry, Rich. That's all, all we have time for the players. We got to we got practice at 1.30. So I'm going to let Jesse and Denim go. I don't want to get you in trouble. Go to practice, but you got to come <laughs> on the radio with me, all right? Thank you so much for your time. Thank you.